we're now going to start splitting Europe and the United States. And so we're going to focus on Europe from 1900 to 1945. But I'm going to give you context for both because, well, this serves as the introduction for both this and the next chapter. Now, starting off this period, you would think we typically start at 1900 and we will with a couple of things, but World War I is the first major point. And from a historical perspective, frequently the 20th century is considered to start with World War I and end with 9-11. Yes, historically speaking, we don't really care about what the date is. We're just kind of bookending things conveniently. Now, World War I changed Europe and the U.S. dramatically. It is the first time that we see basically a meat grinder slaughter effect in war. We're sending troops in knowing full well that as many as three quarter of a million troops may die in a single battle. Now take that number into account. Consider that. How many major metropolitan areas would be completely decimated if three quarters of a million people suddenly went through the meat grinder of World War I? Well, it would be rough. On the heels of that, we also see the rise of communism and fascism, really two sides of a spectrum. Uh, fascism being on one side, communism being on the other, neither of which really works, but we see them both rising from the ashes of World War I. People want something predictable and something different, and so we get both of these. Then we get the Great Depression kicking in at the end of the 1920s. It doesn't set in on one day in 1929. That's a stock market crash. That is not the start of the Depression. Really, the Depression started, depending on your social class, as much as a year or two earlier. And for some people, the Depression was fairly minor until into the 1930s, but it will affect everyone. And it is not just affecting the United States. It has a massive impact on Europe. For example, France almost becomes Marxist at one point due to the Great Depression. Germany, of course, we see the rise of fascism in Germany and Italy due to the Great Depression because of the promises you can make under those horrific circumstances. We will also see, of course, World War II because one giant war isn't nearly enough for Europe. So we see World War II, and the big change here is it's not soldiers going through the meat grinder, it's civilians, and it's aerial bombardment. We see fire bombings, we see horrific, horrific uh, killings and destruction coming out of World War II, and that will be a major impact, on, or have a major impact on art. Now, during this time, starting just before 1900, we see the rise of what's called the avant-garde, or this comes from a French term meaning the advanced guard. And these are artists who are experimental, radical, or unorthodox. They're experimenting and pushing the bounds of art. They're doing this for a number of reasons. One, they're looking at art as something almost through a scientific lens. Can we alter things? Can we capture time? Can we capture emotion? But they're also doing it because of photography. If you remember from the last introduction for 1870 to 1900, I talked about photography and it has a huge impact on art because the artists are forced to depict things that a camera cannot. Things like emotion, time, uh, expression. There's a lot that they're trying to capture and so they're moving away from anything based in reality. There's no reason to do it. After all, you can't compete with a camera when it comes to honesty and capturing what something actually looks like. So this will have, all of these factors will have a huge impact as we move into the 20th century. We'll see artists like Van Gogh and Klimt and their ideas being expanded upon until we look at artists today as we do as people who express themselves in their art. An idea that, let me remind you, would have been completely foreign to Michelangelo four or five hundred years earlier. 